Now we've talked a little bit about alphas and there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with geometry that you create and creating alphas and stuff like that. But just in the alpha menu here, you have the, well, I should say alpha palette. You can go through here and you can grab an arrow and we have our standard brush. We can change that to drag rect. We can drag an arrow out and we change our focal shift down to negative 100. And let's say we wanted those arrows to go the other way. Well, we can just drag in the other direction and switch it around. But, if, you know, if we wanted to go left and right, we can just kind of pull in the direction we want. But there may be an instance where you may want to like rotate an alpha 90 degrees or flip an alpha vertically or have that be the default behavior. Like if I drag this down, I want the arrow to point down, drag it up, I want the arrow to point up. So you want the arrow to point in the direction. Or if you want the opposite, you can also go up here to this alpha menu. We'll go ahead and take this white dot and drag it over here. And you can see I have some extra options in here. So here, with that alpha selected, you can go through and you can rotate this around. So now when I drag down, it's going to go up. You can flip it vertically. You can flip it horizontally. You can even invert it. So now it'll be a white square with a dark arrow in there. And we changed our focal shift to negative 100. Let's go ahead and invert that back. So we get a nice sharp arrow. However, if you go down here under modify, you're going to see we actually have a radial fade in here. So the more I crank this up, the more it's going to go in here and fade out that alpha. So even with a focal shift, I can use the alpha to kind of fade out the edges. I can also go through here and we can choose like alpha 31 and you can go in and change the contrast so you get more of the pinpricks of the white. I can turn this back down to one and that'll kind of soften those transitions. I can change the intensity here. You can do horizontal and vertical tiles if you want to. You can blur out your alpha. So if we go back to our arrow and we say, Blur this up to 15. Now it'll drag out a nice blurry alpha for us. Of course, the opposite of blur is sharpen, so that'll sharpen it up even more. And streak length, we uh, may get into when we start poly painting, but essentially, you know, we'll grab a square alpha out of here. We can crank this up and we can add streaks to our strokes there. So we've talked about a little bit of alphas. We talked a little bit about the stroke menu in Lazy Mouse and some modifiers. And then under the, under the brush menu here, we even talked a little bit about samples, like turning on build up so it'll continuously build up as you brush stroke, or you're turning it off so it won't continue to build up. You actually have to lift your brush up and then continue uh, if you want to have a build up effect. And one thing I want to call out specifically, you've seen me do it a couple times, we go in here to the bottom of the brush menu, there's reset current brush. If you change any settings, you're like, you know what, reset this to default, it will. And you can also reset all brushes. Now be careful, if you hit the B key, you'll lose any brushes that you've created during the session that you didn't, you know, save in your presets and have them on startup. That's a good way to kind of reset all your brushes back to the factory defaults. Now you may notice while you're sculpting, uh, the brush kind of follows the surface of ZBrush. And that's kind of cool too when you go back to the videos where you're using like H polish to kind of go through and determine forms. So you can go through here and there's even things like brush trim dynamic. So you can go through here and you can kind of trim down to a surface or hold down alt and trim up to a surface. So very hard surface type brushes you can use to get some cool results. And having the ability to kind of have your brush kind of find the surface plane of that asset that you're working on is useful sometimes. Um, you can also go in here to Preferences, Edit, turn off a line cursor to surface, and now it's just going to stay straight at the screen. I generally just have that off all the time. Uh, it doesn't really affect anything. So I can go through here and I can still, you know, find this plane and find this plane and go in here with H polish. It's under the hood. It's not doing anything different, but it's just not giving me a visual representation. This thing isn't kind of flip flopping around while I'm sculpting. So if it bugs you, uh, you can turn it off. Uh, if it doesn't bug you and you like to use it, then by all means, keep it on. I won't stop you. I just want to let you know that option was there.